Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Depths, back with, um, it's another new Taku game, but this one happens to be Rebless. So, it's also playable on, on Joe Ren as well. But for some of you that have seen previous videos before, you might remember this name because I've done a video on the, um, the Japanese version of this where it showed some gameplay. And then on top of that, I've done the old version of Rebless, which was in the, which, um, still isn't a lab actually because for some reason, the launch of Rebless has been, like, a little bit cursed for that one, because the original version, which honestly was a better version, if, in my opinion, the launch wasn't smooth, and then they kept having a few issues with the devs or whatnot, so they ended up tearing that game down and rebuilding it into Rebless's Way, or however you pronounce this, and this game, it's... It lasted for quite a while on on um, DMM, but I don't necessarily know how well it's doing since it's been a while since I played it. But um, apparently it's had an issue with this on this side too. If you're looking at this notice, they had a um, they had a bug. But from what I can tell, Joe Ren's in charge of this, not Nutaku. It's just that Nutaku hosted, it, so I don't know. But um. Anyways, they fixed that. There's an error message that they um, gave out. Now, I'm on server 1. Because when you start, you can actually pick a server. So, there's multiple servers. I'm on server 1. I don't know if it's going to open up anymore. Or whatnot. But, if you pick a different server, you start off with a different profile. So, for those of you that are, that are quote-unquote re-rolling... That's how you, um, that's an easy way to doing it without trying to make multiple accounts. You can sip and just pick one of those servers and run off of that. However, my suggestion, you don't really have to re-roll in this game because of the fact that, um, you can get very good access to SSR characters. So, there's that. But anyways, going into my profile, this isn't a full-blown guide, it's just some quick little tips. But naturally, you can re-roll, you just don't have to. But I've already gotten deep into work with this. And, well, the thing with that is that I've only played this for, like, four hours since I first started the English Translated one, and I'm already this far. You can progress pretty fast. At least when it comes to um, player levels. Now, there's a lot of different stuff you can claim. I will say this, search through all the different stuff and try and claim as much gold as you can. You're going to be burning through it pretty quickly. This is not a lot, trust me. Most of the stuff you upgrade requires gold and nothing more. And then there's these things too for if you um happen to get the most CP on the server and stuff like that. But uh, good luck of that because that's for the top 50. And they've already got some serious progress. Also stuff if you happen to um, spend Nutaku gold or whatever. And they'll just give you some extra stuff for it. But it'll, it'll get fairly expensive though. Like this is the part where I would say ignore it. Unless you are really, really wailing on the game. Because most people will probably get like maybe this 20 this um 2000 new taco gold, gold which is 20 bucks maybe the 40 if they do any of that but going past is like 80 150 all the way up to 800 bucks there's only if you're whaling and you really don't have to whale in this game but there's also this for doing all sorts of stuff in the game which you can get for free i've already gotten up to two keys worth of progress but Reaching certain levels, doing certain things in the storyline, getting your levels and your CP up and all that. There's even these limited time offers too. Now, I would get some of these, like these gotcha tickets, but I just straight up just got them all just because. You'll be using a lot of these later on. You probably will end up using these later on. And then, probably these as well. It all depends on... um how good your stuff is. 
because you want to try and save those for SSR, at least these stones and these accessories, if you can. But in the case of these stones right here, you'll use them on characters. And again, SSR preferred, but I would toss them towards the main character because she's going to be stuck with you for a long, long time and even get stronger. I will get to that eventually. There's also guilds. I haven't created a guild. I just randomly joined one. I plan on making one at some point. I just don't know when that's going to happen. But um, there's that. Also summons. Personally speaking, I wouldn't worry about buying any summon tickets unless you spend on the game. Because they give you a lot of gacha tickets, especially right now. These gacha tickets are very, very common. So, keep that in mind. You can also get some stuff from here too. Like you can even get SSR. Um, you can get R characters and shards for SR and SSR characters. So of course I'm gonna pull right now because I can do a free summon. And there I got more shards. That's for an SR character. Now, thing is, it doesn't matter what rarity you pull. You're gonna to want to try and get as many characters as you can because of the simple fact that. There's this thing right here. Where you get album progress for unlocking characters and more for getting stars on each and every single character. It doesn't matter what type they are. It doesn't matter what rarity they are. They'll start giving you a lot of bonuses for all your characters. So this is a very good way to sip and get some CP to boost. Now, also... When you do hop in and go into the guild, there's this part-time job thing. You definitely do want to um, double-check it. Go, go to whoever and then see who you can help out. And then, of course, there's the guild hall. Always remember to um, claim your stuff. Because you're going to want to clean different things. You want to gift everybody as well if you can. Now, I'll show off Guild Dungeons in a second. But, um, getting into the meat thing of the things. Now, going into your characters. Her right here. She will be with you for a very, 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 very long time. I don't even... Now... My progress on the um, Japanese side, I've never removed her, and I don't know if you actually can remove her. So she'll probably be stuck with you the entire time. She'll probably take that first character slot or whatever. You can move her around or whatnot. She starts off as R, but starts growing in power. I don't know if she can eventually reach LR, but she definitely reaches SSR. So there's that. So trying to raise her up isn't too bad. You can get these materials from doing storyline. Which is right here, including these evolution stones. You'll get shards for doing storyline too. So there's that as well. But you can also buy some more in the shop, I'll show that. These is where you get those little stones I mentioned before. So doing that's going to give you some bonus stats, and as you can see, she can get quite a lot. And it'll just only increase as you go on. I haven't a lot potential yet because I'm not level 44. But, um, that's going to be another thing you're going to need stuff for as well. Now, there's still your basic characters. I can start leveling these guys up a little bit more, but I'm only level 33, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I try to rack these up and save them for whenever I'm going into the promotion thing, because when I start advancing them, eventually this level I'll need is going to increase. Like, right now I need level 30, and everybody already is level 30 from what I'm using, so there's that. But more so, you can also give them equipment as well, which is where this lineup thing comes in. Now, starting off, just use the best equipment you can find, which is the highest rarity. But later on, you'll be able to get these type of equipments right here. And that's where you might want to try and actually match these up so you can actually get some bonuses for when you um, put them on your characters. As you can see, it can give a decent little bonus to your stats as well. But keep in mind that 
some of them are based on like the rarity of the character like she doesn't even need the R equipment anymore because the shackle bonus for um, R equipment won't even um, matter now thing is you, with equipment you have to um, have the same thing equipped on them with their heroines you just need to get the character once you get the character it'll just give you the boost like I don't even have for these characters in the party but it still gives me the bonus for that so there's that but also I'm very close to getting these these are going to be accessory slots later on there will be even more CP so there's that as well but um different characters they have different stuff and whatnot like if I even go into to their details you'll be able to see a few things too like when you start them up they'll get bonus stats as well along with um these extra boosts so there's that as well like when you raise the stars they'll get these as well now this is where things get interesting you see these skills normal attack is what they do whenever they normally hit of course and that can play a huge role in your lineup as well these ultimates will also do that as well like she'll get a, um, a bonus a chance to boost the attack power of people in the same row so she can also buff as well as well as hitting all enemies in the front line it also gives a chance to stun them as well so that's actually pretty good you want characters that can do some AOE buff and debuff and all that you'll want them at the start now later on you might need to change formations because you might end up against a boss where it's like okay single target is going to do a lot more damage or you might end up in like the little guild thing where you want AOE as much as possible to try and do as much damage as possible out the gate now again starting off I would prefer AOE because it's going to hit more enemies and most of the storyline is going to have multiple enemies anyways. So it will just make it easier to go through the storyline. But also you're going to want a healer. Now healers for the most part right now will just heal one character for the normal attack. Like they won't even damage the enemies. They'll just heal your um, weak, weakest HP character. And then when they use their ultimate they'll also... um heal the entire group and some will even like her will even buff you as well now when you start getting more like stars on different characters and whatnot that's when they can really start getting some huge boosts like when she gets seven stars she's gonna um she's gonna increase SP whenever she heals guaranteed so there's that and then there's some with special effects too, like Alice, I know she'll start doing extra damage the more debuffs the enemy has. So there's that as well. So if you got somebody that can debuff, Alice will start shelling out a lot of damage. Now, a lot of this will definitely change as you get, get stronger because there's going to be more and more options opening up. It may seem like I have a lot of CP right now, sitting at 632,000. But you can indeed later on reach the hundreds of millions, especially when LR stuff becomes a little bit more accessible. Now, it's hard to grind LR equipment, but as far as it goes to LR characters, I remember most of them being pretty much either summon the luck or basically a paywall. So, I wouldn't worry too much about LR at the start until you're like really, really far in the game, like when you're starting to get tens of millions of CP. But SSR definitely will carry you a long, long way. Now, something else that will help you out too is the shop. Personally, I tend to buy out the stamina potions, the EXP potions. If you want to try and get some strong equipment pretty quickly, maybe the SSR box as well. And I definitely buy out the gold. The rest of the stuff is basically as you need it. But you don't have to go out your way for it. If you're wailing on this game you will be burning through quite a lot of diamonds not just on pools so consider that but you will get a decent amount of diamonds from storyline and doing other stuff as well 
Like, even progressing in Arena will get you diamonds, so keep that in mind. But this is also where you burn quite a few of them as well, just heroin shopping. You can just refresh and just get extra stuff and whatnot. Now, these souls come from different sources. You can sell character shards for more souls. I would not do that, though. Like, do not do that. Because of the fact that when when you star up any character, even if they're not on your team, it increases everybody's CP. So, when you get access to more characters and whatnot, do not sell any characters or shards. Try to avoid that as much as possible. Unless you're really hurting for a character, like a healer or something like that, and even then I still wouldn't do it. But these little summon shards are basically to upgrade your skills. If you haven't unlocked a skill, there's not too much point about them, but you can rack them up if you want. Honor Shop is where you go, go for PvP, and well... It's not just ranking up that will get you some stuff too, but you will also be able to buy out some things like character shards and all this other stuff right here. When you reach a certain rank, you'll be able to um, access a lot of these in order to buy it out. My suggestion to you, get as far as possible. It is going to be very, 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 very difficult to try and get first, so you're probably not getting something like this, but you can try. You're not going to have a, ch a chance at getting first until you start getting CP along the lines of the highest CP characters, because CP really matters a lot. Now, the guild shop is stuff for doing like different guild missions and whatnot. When your guild levels start going up, you can buy a lot of this stuff, but the common thing is, again, more character shards. So, you can start getting a lot of those. You can also start buying out gold, too, if you need it, and EXP potions. So, keep that in mind. Equipment is from the Tower of Trials, and this is a big thing, because this is how you grind out a lot of these type of equipments. When you're starting off, I would try and get some R equipment, but then eventually switch over to SR and then eventually SSR. Don't try to stock up for SSR out the gate, because it will start holding you off a lot. Because you're only getting one shard per trade. You want to boost your CP early on. So... R equipment for all your characters, and then when you do that, SR, then when you do that, SSR. Because you can set up an, um, you can refund your equipment. Like, you can get refunds for your equipment, so you'll get some of your, um, gold progress and all that back. So, keep that in mind. If your SP, I mean your CP, if your CP is low, then you're probably not going to get that many, um, of these things these little weapon exchange bricks, you won't get too many of them in order to trade for the better stuff, because it gets very hard very fast in the Tower Trials. So, definitely judge your characters well enough, because it is going to be very, very difficult. And speaking of which, with your equipment, like, I'm just doing this as an example, because I will switch her back. But if you switch your character, like I was using her, if you switch your character, the equipment stays there. So done right, you only need six sets. So keep that in mind. Done right, you only need six sets. And also, I should go back here for the lineup too, because I'm still trying to, um, I'm trying to boost her out with her stuff. So, the promotion, you can sweep stages too, so it'll instantly clear. That's going to be very helpful when you run stuff like this. Because, see, I got all these materials, now I can use this evolution stone, and she's gone up. You have to go through all the processes to get an actual rank. So, keep that in mind. And these will refill every single day, because these are bosses that you get these from. The boss stages, which are basically elite stages. Do the highest ones you can, and it will get you the most stuff at once. Like, you see how much progress I'm getting just off of this. And then, boom, I can do this. My suggestion is to try and get the characters you're using the most to promotion 3. Because when you do that, they can use their ultimate out the gate. It will give them enough bonus SP to get 
get them out the gate. Now, anything past that is dependent on how strong you've progressed, but it will also give you some more boosts. There is so many things to worry about with that. Like, see, now I got level 34 and I can do accessories, so they're probably going to try and tell me about that. Anytime you unlock something new, there's always going to be something. Like, see, you will get put into a um, tutorial. And now I can craft an accessory. Now, the whole thing with robbing accessories, you're fighting other people's teams. And as you can see, I was able to use an ultimate out the gate because I was already promotion 3 on her. This is how you get some other stuff as well. Like, see, gold, I had a chance for diamonds as well. And now I can craft this accessory. When you start off, do not worry about the higher rarity stuff. Try to start off with R stuff, then go to SR, then go to SSR. The only exception is characters. Like, yeah, now I can equip this accessory. Except for I don't want that accessory on her. She's just, she's single target. I don't want her to be on single target. Like, I want somebody that can AoE for that first. Because that's going to up the attack power. And as you can see, I just claimed more daily stuff right there. And it got me more daily progress. Do your dailies. As much as possible, do your dailies. Now then. When it comes to your guild, you'll be able to attack different things. Now, it is very hard to kill these guys at first. And it says I can claim the rewards too. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing clear. So yeah, apparently I can't sip and um do this just yet because um it's on the timer. But when you attack these guys, there's a lot of AOE stuff you have to worry about at first, and then when you start dealing dealing more damage as a group, it's like really time consuming to kill one of those things. So you do need a lot of guild members at first, but when you start getting stronger, you'll you'll start dealing a lot more damage. Trust me. So, there's that. Now, I could do one more free summon. And it's another shard. Okay. Now, when it comes to different stuff in the exploration, big, 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 big thing is definitely arena, tower trial, and even the daily dungeons if you can do it. Like, even the daily dungeons if you can do it. But they'll give you a CP suggestion if you're capable of winning like for instance 164,000 and as you can see these challenges go even higher like this is 4 million for hard and 44 million for master again your CP will start skyrocketing later but explore do everything guild do everything main story just do everything in this game you'll start gaining cp quite fast even if you don't have high rarity stuff and yeah invader challenge i do believe that's going to be when um another there's a lot of player versus player stuff too so the earlier you get into this the better off you'll be long term trust me with that one even with this stuff too like you can go into the storyline they're giving you rewards for all this too. I already started getting gotcha tickets from that and they gave me like 20 of those. Now they're starting to give me these gems. And I can even go to a storyline stage just to show how the battles look. The battles are automated though. Like, they're full on automated. Except for this bar right here. You can switch that between auto and manual. Like, I can put that on manual and call out the attacks whenever I want. But how you arrange your characters will definitely matter quite a lot. Like for instance, that first character will start putting debuffs on enemies, attack and defense debuffs. And then I got Alice who's next because she gets bonus damage whenever enemies are debuffed. And I have this on auto so it's going to sit up and deal damage and heal my group. And 
a healer is a safeguard for um storyline, so whenever you set up and um use them, it will help keep your characters alive. If you really want some security, you can do it for two. Now in that case, she ended up getting blocked because of the fact that they had some damage immunity. There isn't too much you can do with that. Now, some characters will defense ignore. And of course you can speed this up and you can even skip. But anyways, once you do your storyline, you can get more stars. Just claim that, you get more jewels, you get more upgrade materials. When you progress far enough, you'll even get extra treasure chests without even worrying about stars. So the whole thing is just to progress as far as you can. Especially, especially when it comes to the trial. Like, I could try about this if I want to, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to reset this. Now, the thing about trials is the fact that there are special missions. Like, it starts off easy, just wipe out everybody. Suggested CP isn't even in five digits yet, so you should be able to do that pretty quickly. So now, go through... I just hit the skip button for everything because it will make it a little bit faster. And see, now the CP has spiked quite a bit. It's like a, a basically doubled. And as far as I know, there is a hundred challenges on this. They say floor one, two, and three, but it's really just like multiple floors. There is a hundred fights in this. At least. Good luck getting all the stars on everything. You won't be able to do that early on. But every single, every three you do, you'll be able to get one of these buffs. Personally, I would prefer to get the defensive ones a little bit more than the offensive. But it depends. But now it's saying you want to defeat me in six turns. If you do not kill them in six turns you fail even if nobody on your team dies so that's the thing a whole turn is when everybody takes takes an action like everybody on your side and the enemy side when you all take an action that's a turn and doing this will get you a lot more equipment stuff to basically make stronger equipment Like, I'm almost at the point where I don't even need our rarity equipment. Now, it's still based on how many stars you get, too. Like, if you do three stars for everything, you'll be able to buy every buff. But if you don't, then you won't be able to. Now, this one, if the entire, if the entire party holds 50 HP, 50% of their HP or less, then you fail. Just pay attention to what it says, and you'll be able to go go up against whatever. This is where a healer really helps you out. And oh look, I got 18 stars right there. Now I've already got a decent dodge rate. If I can really start spiking that, then I will be avoiding a lot of attacks. Now this one, you have to survive with no more than two people dead. Also, you will not know the enemy line up until you fight them. But as far as I can tell, they haven't changed. Like, see, someone died on that one. Now, this is where I have to pay attention because I have 638,000 CP and this is 696. That's a death sentence. And this might even be too difficult too with the 435,000. So, this is where you might want to start playing it a little bit safe. Like, they still did significant damage to Alice. And if I have less than 70% of my total HP, I will lose. This is going to be very, very dangerous. 
So I'm going to weakest one parry point blank. Sometimes it's better not to try and rush things. Like now the middle one is a death sentence for me. And see, I failed on the weakest one right there because I was lost too much HP. But when you progress far enough, they'll give you some stuff like this. Depending on what you do or don't need, don't even worry about it. Now, Amazon, I remember I couldn't do hers because I was too weak for that. I'm going to see if I'm strong enough for it now. Yeah, I should be strong enough for it. And Yuzu, I may or may not be able to defeat. I don't know. These will get you some extra stuff too if you can kill them. And if I was a little bit stronger, I'd be able to. I did a lot of damage there. But anyways, again, this is how you get extra stuff. You even outright get equipment shard boxes for it, so keep that in mind. And keep it and see, here's the thing. This is a short guide. Because if I really go into all of the different stuff to break down, yeah. Now, here's a big thing that some people are probably wondering too, which is the last but not least. If you're playing the um the game the version of this game that isn't censored. You're wondering, how do you end up getting your um your character scenes? You go to your character, hit details, hit this, and start using these favors. When you put in enough favors, you'll get a scene. You can also comment on your character, too, if, if you want to. But anyways, that's all for this. I'm going to get back into this because i got a lot of grinding to do. But, um... Anyways, that's all for now, guys. More of this will definitely come soon, and take care.